All right. <clears throat> so yeah, it's Moles with Geddon and Senshu here. And yeah, Ibarco Ibar uh, says two minutes late already. Worst day ever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's just stop the whole thing then. Yeah, we've got you here um, again. You know, great commitment uh, to support the community. I think a lot of people do appreciate it as well. My camera's cool. really fuzzy, but. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, anyway, let's get on with it. Um, <clears throat> so I've got quite a few questions. I haven't had a chance to order them, but uh, let's hit off with this one from Goyo. Uh, several themes are needing attention. There's a is there a big patch incoming, or will we see lots of little changes over time? Uh, so, the short answer is lots of little changes over time. Uh, the longer answer is, one of the things that we did with the revamp uh, and the couple patches after, they were all really big, sweeping changes. So we kind of pulled the rug out of every, under everyone's feet, and then we pulled out again with, with, the, with the pricing changes. So what we're trying to do is do a little more smaller focus patches. That way you can get, uh, um, there will be a little more digestible. That being said, um, uh, even the smaller focus patches can adequately uh, address a theme like the Skeezik, which has happened with them. It's not a good example, so. Okay, I'll try not to have too long of answers so you can ask more questions. Yeah, and then I guess people can get more involved in the Twitch chat as well. Um, cool. And uh, feel free to jump in anytime, Senshu. <laughs> um, any plan for new game modes or adding back 2v2 in ranked? Uh, so, I'm loading up a Twitch chat, which is why I keep looking over to my left. So yeah, I can that's see probably a good going. idea, yeah. Uh, so, as for the game modes, <clears throat> uh, that was actually asked in chat a couple days ago. Uh, the answer for that is, is resounding uh, no. Um, we introduced game modes in Pox Nora a long time ago. Uh, we had two or three. Um, one of them that we didn't release uh, was really cool. It's called Black Dragon Flight. Um, really? Uh, where basically, instead of a shrine, you had a giant... This is pre-Avatar, so the equivalent of an Avatar uh, that couldn't... Uh, um, you couldn't move on their own, and they would just move down the maps and past each other. Uh, it was really cool. It was a super fun game type, um, as was a bunch of the different game types. The problem was the ones we introduced were almost violently unpopular. Uh, very few people um, played them. Um, and when they did start to get a little bit of a bump, what happened is we split up the game queue. So instead of having ten people looking to play a PvP game, you'd have, you know, six people... Um, uh, looking to play, uh, you know, a head-to-head -head match, and you have four people just kind of wanting to do a specific game type. So, um, you know, I, I still like the idea, but uh, I think we need a much bigger base in order to support that. One of my fa personal favorite game types was actually Highlander mode. I yeah. think it's the most fun way to play Pox. Um, but again, it splits up game types. So. <clears throat> Um, and then there was another part of that question, right? Yeah. Um, the, the other part was... Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, about 2v2 in ranked again. Right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, basically, uh, Cortices wants to do a whole lot of work with the ranking system in general. Uh, and the 2v2 ranking kind of only had its first pass even back in the day. Um, as you saw, there was a, when we enabled the 2v2 ranking, it kind of got out of whack. Uh, basically, everyone was, you know, super high-ranked 2v2, and it kind of ate their um, 1v1 ranking. So we're going to want to bring it back, but I want to bring that back as part of a uh, larger update with the ranking system in general. Yeah. Wow, my camera is really poor. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, so that's, that's good to hear. I think a lot of people did like uh, 2v2 ranked, um, but I, I do definitely appreciate that it needs you know, a good look at, really, and I don't think right. it's really a top priority at the moment, is it? Mm. 
I know Sensu likes his 2v2. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> oh, yeah. That way he can blame someone else when he loses. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. <laughs> no, I blame myself for losing. <laughs> I'm well, at least okay. I don't lose as fast. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, from Spikey. Um, would it be possible for the turn timer to go back to two minutes now the game's pace is a little slower again? You know, I hadn't thought of it. Mm. I mean, a lot of people, including myself, do often run out of time at 1.45, and a lot of people, you know, didn't like the, the change to the shorter timer, actually. Oh. That happened a long time ago, didn't it? The yeah. 1.45? Yeah, I think it ranked it used to be two minutes in, in training grounds. It used to be about uh, about the same or two minutes 30. There was an option, I think, in training grounds. Right. No, that's that's not a, that's not a bad idea. Uh, mm. The main reason not to was to kind of mitigate trolls a little bit. Um, mm. But, you know, I think I know when that changed. Let me... Uh, I want to run some stats and see how long the turns are taking now. If they're coming up against that edge, then that might be a might be a good idea. Um, I think like early in the game, um, especially turns don't take anywhere near the full amount of timer. Um, right. But when you get to those key power turns, you do often run out of time, and it can obviously right. cost you a game if you run out of time by a couple of seconds. We we played with different clocks in Pox Nora. Uh, like we had the um, hmm. chess clock. It's what we use for the tournament system. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right, where you only have so long to play the game, and when you take your fast turns, you have your one timer that that, that ticks down. The problem is we can't do that for normal PvP because you get someone who's like, I'm starting to lose. This is ridiculous. And let's go yeah. AFK, and you have to wait for the rest of their turn to finish, which <laughs> might be another 22 minutes. Um, so, yeah, the two two minutes doesn't seem doesn't seem bad. The thing is, right now, I think most players are. Well, let me chew on that. That's not a bad idea. Uh, Fickle says, "What about adding a time bank that people have suggested? It's been suggested sort of many times over the years. Um, right. An overtime it's... clock that goes down when you don't get your turn. Um, I think he means like you kind of save up a small bank of time." On turns you end quickly right. to use on a, on like a power turn, you know. Um, yeah, you know, that's that's not that's not terrible. I will say that the one annoyance is, uh, you know, if if there is a way to troll it, uh, they will come. Um, <laughs> oh, so yeah. that's my only my only reservation. Uh, but the, I think the truth is, look, one of the original times we played with, with Pox. And we're talking. This is 2006. Yeah. Uh, was the concept of um, uh, increasing the turn timer by the amount of runes you had deployed? Uh, okay. So early in the game they're short. Later in the game they're long. Um, hmm. you know, we played with that idea. You know, I let, let me let me let me mill over this, over this a little more. It's not a bad idea, and certainly going to a two minute timer for a ranked. Won't matter. Most fast players hit end turn anyway. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like you say, a lot of a lot of people do just end the turn when they're done because they want to get the games done quickly. Um, right. Obviously, there is going to be the odd troll that <laughs> just sit there and <laughs> long the turns out. You know. Uh, no, it's good to hear that you thinking about possibilities there because uh, right. it's a big issue for me especially because um, I'm a bit slow on my turns sometimes. Um, okay, from Demonicus or Demonicus, I'm not sure how that's said. Uh, what are your plans for SG? Is it going to be a meta B faction, or are we getting some CC? Uh, is it a what faction? A uh, meta oh, what? Sorry, a meat beef. Sorry, a meat. Beef. Oh. <laughs> uh, are they going to get some CC? Well, there's there's a few things in the pipe for ST right now. Uh, so. Nothing that is concrete enough to announce yet, um, but there's a lot of theme focus that's going to happen. Certainly in the expansion uh, is kind of where where a lot of that I know uh, is going to get put together. Um, as far as CC is concerned, I've never thought of that being a big problem in ST. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> um, you know, not to say that it, that it, that it couldn't be, um, but uh, I haven't seen it as as a as a thing. The idea is more that the ST can take that one extra punch since they've got all that uh, uh, all that HP or all that uh, no can do goodness. So uh, hopefully that was an adequate answer. Yeah. I don't I don't feel like it was, but I'm sorry. <laughs> By the way, if you see anything in the Twitch chat that you want to respond to, feel free. Um, all right. Let's see uh -oh. who's yelling at me about anything. <laughs> Not yet, I don't think. Not yet. There's but, one post uh, that says Senshu is sexy. Yep, that is the general consensus is that Senshu is. You are a beautiful man, apparently. <laughs> uh, okay, so from Sealer Zero, um, he wants to know are there any plans to change strong defensive abilities that hard counter many different champions, for example, in Corporeal and Colossal? Uh. No. Usually those abilities are put there for a specific reason. Uh, and I'm sure someone's going to be asking today about magic in um, uh, uh, SL. Um, because it seems to be coming up a lot. And I hear in Corporal here too. Um, basically, there's this... Without getting too deep on you guys, there's this concept of meta and what is meta. And what we should execute that's going to be, you know, part of that meta. Uh, to me, that technically that term just kind of means what's popular to be that that's currently being played. Um, but if you have to use specific champions to counter, it's a good idea to have a magic burning dude in your deck for that specific reason. Uh, it's a good idea to have something that would counter a Colossal Champion uh, should you encounter one uh, for that reason. So the idea is a good idea to have a detection unit uh, in case someone has stealth. Um, it's just kind of like nice to have this um, you know, well-rounded well -rounded group as much as you can. Of course, you can be on the other end of that and just run all Colossal dudes um, I don't think you can actually do that, but just focus on a buttload of colossal dudes and try to catch them with their pants down too. It's certainly a, you know it's kind of a give and take. Um, uh, I, I would say for thing, especially for units with uh, ghost, they're usually designed with that limitation in mind, knowing that there's only a couple of champions that can take them down. Yeah. Um, and when they do get taken down, they have to get popped pretty quickly. Um, I'd say the one recent example of where a character was too strong was the uh, Ancestral Avenger for <laughs> KF, since he could switch over, and he just had so many hit points. Uh, we wound up trying to address him directly, because I'd rather make him killable than change that ghost mechanic um, out there. Um, now... Okay, here's a bit of a follow-up to that. Do you think that you fixed the problem with the Ancestral Avenger, or do you think he's still a problem? Let's just... Um, so I'm going to genericize that statement. Do I think I fixed X, or is X still a problem? Mm. Uh, X is always still a problem. Yeah. Uh, nothing, is, nothing is finished. Yeah. There are way too many moving pieces for me to ever say, hey, that dude is done. Uh, because that dude exists in a world where other things change. So, do I think the Ancestral Avenger is fixed? Um, you know, no more or less than any other champion is fixed, if that's the greatest cop-out answer in the world. Uh, I do still have my eye on that champion specifically because of that reason. Um, um, so, it's, it's, he's specifically not done. But even a champion who hasn't got a whole lot of attention, um, you know, could be could be a, a deal. Um, you know, a, as a note, hopefully someone asks about meta later on, and I'll talk about that because I, I have a I have a lot to say on that. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think a few people feel that the ancestral avenger is maybe a bit too efficient, but yeah, I'm sure you'll be looking at that in future patches anyway. So, right. Uh, Nebron uh, is determined for me to ask a hard-hitting question, so here we go. All right. Uh, 
The Here only thing I want to know is why you believe yourself to be a better judge of balance than the people that have played this game competitively for six years. Okay. Okay. And if Good. you deny the accusation, then explain why you refuse to take advice from this anyone This interview is over! Better. No, uh, okay, look. <laughs> so, a couple of things. Uh... And this is, the, it was kind of a oversimplified question, so I'm going to be cheeky to start with it and do an oversimplified answer. Mm. Um, playing games and making games are different things. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, a little bit cheeky of an answer. Uh, but, um, the truth is when someone says something on the forums or someone says something that they're having a problem with the game or there's a balance issue, there's a balance question, um usually what gets posted is something along the lines of hey, this guy's broken, I want you to fix it. Mm. Uh, the first thing that I have to do is find out what's actually bothering you. Uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm scraping by for, for a specific example here. Um, but it could be uh, hey, um, you know, this theme is broken. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what, what, is, what, what do you mean by broken? Does it physically not work? Is there, um, is there something that needs to be updated? Like, w w w what's happening? Um, then, if I talk with that person long enough, usually I'll discover what the core issue is. And the core issue that person might, might have might be something totally unrelated. It could be the ST bonus is too much, or I don't have a war banner. Um, I know that sounds like I'm pulling stuff out of the air, but yeah. a lot of times it's kind of what it, what it gets into. So that's the, 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 the first answer to that question. The second is, it takes a whole lot of big picture stuff to be able to add a rune uh, into Pox Nora. Because it's not just about addressing a theme, and it's certainly not about uh, um, refining an existing meta. It's about blowing up what's there and creating new stuff. Um, and that requires a bit of a big picture view. Um, the second, now I'll kind of, now I'll kind of rewind and, and, and restart. The second is, Pox Nora's also, like the, today is the Pox Nora's eighth anniversary. Yep. Um, Happy birthday, is, Pox. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is a whole big deal. Not a lot of games last that long. A lot of players have been playing continuously for that entire time. Anyone who does anything for eight years is an expert, right? A lot of the players that we have in Pox are experts at Pox. Hell uh, yeah. So I'm not going to shy away from that. I'm not going to say... I'm not gonna, you know, dismiss the community or anything. Um, there aren't a whole lot of games that have the kind of engagement that we do. Not just in terms mm -hmm. of, hey, I'm talking to you, you're welcome. Like, mm -hmm. we have people post things on the forums, we have the player council where we cycle people in and out, um, and, um, you know, uh, a lot, a lot of what's happening, especially in these last couple of patches, has been very, very council-driven. Mm. So what I'm actually doing is kind of bouncing between these two worlds. Um, there is... The act of making Pox Nora is, is difficult, and there's a lot to it. And so, you know, I, I could easily come from that world and just think about that. But when you're also balancing what's happening with... Um, um, you know what's happening yeah, in the game, it. what's happening with the players. I'm also taking an input input from there. So I will say it's it is a tricky, fickle thing to do, mm -hmm. uh, and everyone has their own interpretation of what needs to be done. Uh, I would say there's no perfect way to balance out how that works, but uh, you know we're we're certainly giving it our best. Is that a is that a terrible answer? No, no. I mean, I think the the question. Um... Although I can see why he asked the question, 
Um, cuz I think a lot of people have said, "Oh, um get in your uncommon league. Um get in you <laughs> play the game enough, etc., etc." <laughs> but also, on the other hand, I know you definitely have sought opinion from players. Um I know, you know, certainly you've spoken a lot to the council and you 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 know, certainly use the council a lot for your patches. So I think Right. <laughs> Nebron says and... what he's saying and what he's doing are two very different things. <laughs> no, no. Can you, by the way, can you guys see me? Yeah, just about. <laughs> oh, is it too dark? A bit dark, yeah. Alright, I'll go sort it out, but I'm going to go find something <laughs> first. Be right back. Oh, I thought he was about to say something then. <laughs> right. Well, you know, uh, let, me, let, me, let me talk about what we're, what we're doing with, the, with this generation of council. So for the revamp, it was very much a forest for the trees thing. Uh, you know, when when Poxnor was originally put together, there was a vision for it. That vision changed over time, but there was definitely a, a, a thing that I wanted to get back to, uh, and it was very much getting away from champions that had you know fifteen, sixteen abilities on them. Uh, every champion being offensive and defensive. Uh, that was way more of um, uh, a dictation part on my part with the council. Um, so uh, what I was using them was it was kind of like uh, a clockwork orange scenario. I just had them all tied to chairs, and I was just showing them horrible things um, just Yo. to see how much they screamed, and I would use that as a, as, as a reaction uh, yeah. for you know what I would do. <laughs> Um, you know, I had a lot of people tell me, uh, including uh, Dagon, who was the third person that, you know, it was Cortices, Dagon, and I that made uh, Hawksnor on the floor of a garage. Uh, um, Sweet. Dagen, By Microsoft, Dagen told man. Me not, to, not to try. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I didn't want to not try. I don't think anyone would say that there was that we were in, um, you know, stellar shape. So that was kind of the original part of the council. What's happening now is we're doing what's called um, player council reviews. By the way, uh, the only constant that I like for processes is change. So this is how we're doing it now. I kind of like how it's coming together. I'm sure we're going to change in the future. Um, so the only constant is the change in process. What we're doing right now are PCRs. Uh, basically, everyone on the council uh, comes up with three to five major topics, and I, on top of whatever I do else, I also address those three to five uh, major topics. Um, per faction is the goal. That way, patches will tend to take, um, will tend to address the biggest things from each faction. And we'll also tend to uh, cover the the um, uh, most visible things for the factions. Again, that's also happening on top of whatever the hell else um, you know we're doing at any given time. Um, so far, it seems to work out pretty well. When we have when the when when we have a, a solid participation from the council, it comes out and it, it's worked out well so far. Um, I'm going to keep doing that for a while. Uh, I don't know if we're ever going to, you know, it's certainly not not written in stone, right? We can we can we can change it around if we need to, but that's kind of the process that we're using, um, and that is for balance stuff, things that happen with the expansions and and whatnot. That's still um, you know, I, uh, um, that's still a surprise to the council as much as it is anything else. The new runes that came out, the, um, uh, uh, I don't know what we would call them, the revamp midterm runes, I just kind of came up with them and, and, and put them in the game. That's so, very sweet. I liked them. Yeah, yeah I, I, I thought they were fun. From perhaps the dwarf were really that overpowered either, to be honest. No, I mean, the, 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 Pre-play reactions were all these guys are way too powerful, and these guys totally suck. Um, but it kind of balanced out, and that's what I think new runes should be. It should be, hey, this is fun. The Raven Speaker 
He fits a neat role. He's mm. really great for anti summoned. He's kind of a cool little flavor. He shoots ravens out of the air. Like, yeah. all right, neat. You don't have to have him, but he's certainly a cool guy to play with. He's sweet. So, he's definitely viable as well. So. Definitely, yeah. Right. So that's what I like with uh, uh, new new runes. Mm. Uh, Rather than being completely OP from the get go. Yeah. Right. So you don't. The only you don't. One that really did that was the dwarf. And, yeah. Uh, that was partially due to the bug on the keg toss. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> surprise, surprise! Not everything I write is bug free the first time. <laughs> so, uh, doing what I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, we should so. take another question. Um, okay. Right. Uh, so from Chicken Pox to what are you guys planning to do with the racials, which are slightly difficult to play? Um, for example, Liches, Jalibrium, and Leos. Uh, and is it possible that the next it's expansion will have more of these racials to help them to be playable? The Tartan passive is the worst, man. It's so bad. Well, okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of questions. Uh, <laughs> so let's let's start with the. the the first one, which was kind of general about racials. Mm. Um, so, um, again, I want to try to nail home, and I think this is a a losing battle. Um, so I might just stop trying to drive it home. Uh, <laughs> there is a difference between a racial and a theme. Mm. Not all themes are racial. And not all racials are themes. Yeah, so like Deep Dead is a racial, yeah. but it's not a theme. Yeah, uh, like zombies are a theme, for example. Right. No yeah. Can Do is a racial, but not a theme. Right? Mm. Uh, or, I'm sorry, No Can Do is a theme. Woo! I just screwed it up, so never mind. <laughs> uh, no Can Do is a theme, but not a racial, right? Uh, so that's kind of the, the start for that. Um, what happened was there is a lot of, you know, a good ninety percent of the game was in the shoebox. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And That's why it was so there, bar there, there's kind of a, a a difficulty inherently involved with that. So part of the problem is everyone wants the guys they like to be, uh, you know, uh, not just playable. They want them to be that that buffer before they get OP, you know, where it's mm. really good and easy to play and kind of not everyone can be in that spot. Um, so that's kind of the, 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 the premise to it. That's not really a fair answer. Um, yes, I do want to look at uh, those racials. Uh, Jalibrium kind of got hit a little harder than was intended. Um, I do... I would expect them to come back. They're kind of a fun... Slags and well, slags are a different a different thing. But uh, slags also kind of got hit a little harder than I wanted it to, and they're going to be they're going to be coming back. Um, um, the Maljarn stuff, uh, and so you mentioned Laos, but there's also uh, you know Stitched and and some other themes there. Um, uh, WTF noob is gonna really. Uh, go crazy because I'm not going to answer the Sish question yet. Um, it wasn't asked, right? Only Laos was asked. Um, I'm just screwing with them now. You, I'm messing with you. Uh, the, uh, so I do want to do things, uh, you know, w w with the Laos. Part of the problem with the Mulsharn era stuff is the the ubiquitous split factionness of everything. Uh, and every time I think of a a Laos, um, uh, what what two factions are Laos? It's messing my head right now. I'm totally brain farting. I S and S T and Laos. Right, I S and S T. Whereas you look at it, it's a jungle tiger. Why is it not K F I S? Yeah, I know that's, that's weird, but that's and you know the the um, the Aliyite brother is K F S T. Yeah. The the Tortons are uh, FS um, SL uh, KF. K, KF. Um, to me, it's, Tortin, it's a turtle. It should be FS, and it's got the shell IS. Dude, Tortons so, actually come into four factions. There's SL, uh, KF, 
FS inevitably. Right. This fall faction, it seems quite random, really. Like, why on earth they're, they they're a little, they're a little across the board, so they're kind of hard to balance. Yeah, balance. Mm. Uh, you know, it's way too early for me to say anything this big or definitive. Yeah, uh, but you know, I, uh, you know, my my knee jerk reaction is when I attack layoffs to just either redo what factions they are in or focus them on one faction and yeah. have crossovers. That way they could be balanced more directly. Yeah. Uh, Crossover so, avatars as well, that'd be cool. Well, right, yeah. I mean then then you start getting all kinds of things. So <laughs> um, Crossover uh, split heroes, you know, why not avatars? <laughs> well yeah. Picking them becomes a thing then. But Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, did I answer all, all parts of that question? Yeah, yeah. One, one thing um, that I was actually wondering, what was it now? Oh yeah, there's been a lot of talks about the um, balance uh, and uh, things like that, and the, the best way to balance is to reach a point where everything's so imbalanced that it balances out. And that it was a lot like that under Corps, you know, everything was so power creeped, kind of everything worked, and well, nothing was shit kind of thing. Well, you're, well... Yes and are no. You going, so are you going towards you're talking that, about uh, you're talking about the FW or the uh, Maljaran era with corpse, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was well, a good era. What, it was a good era. Yeah. Uh, well, what happened was basically, uh, and by the way, corpse and I are real great friends. Sweet. Uh, uh, he he very much went with like. Uh, Let's have some new guys, yeah! And like <laughs> those guys were crazy powerful, mm. and anything that worked with them was crazy powerful. Yeah. And everything else was just left in the dust. That's true. Um, mm. So it was a fun era, mm. and this is this is this is where you get to the whole, um, you know, uh, long term versus short term. Their long term health was not a consideration for Maljara. Yeah. Specifically, one of the one of the dozens of reasons. Uh, was the split faction runes? Not yeah. to say that those guys are bad or not, whatever. Uh, but the, the characters, but uh, it added a big burden uh, on the future. And what wound up happening after Moljara is, instead of creating new ways to do things and new mechanics, the power creep uh, went. I'm not saying power creep didn't exist before. But the power mm. creep jump went up real big. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it, it was kind of like we had a bit of a power creep, and then Maljara hit, and it just went shh. Yeah. So <laughs> oh. as fun as that stuff is, as cool as a Draxar Raven speaker with 34 damage <laughs> would be, um, everyone would certainly get them. Um, yeah. I don't feel like it's the way to go. Because no. I feel like what happens is um, you wind up getting what happened with SOE at the end, where they yeah. were selling packs for nine dollars, where you got one card, uh, yeah. and he was super awesome, and you had to have him. Yeah, uh, yeah. It got I, really I wasn't stale. A fan of that. It did get really stale. It I do does agree. definitely cause long-term problems. Yeah. Um, I know it's a bit off-topic, but have you ever thought about just completely scrapping the split hero, the, all the split stuff, and just creating new factions altogether? <laughs> no. Uh, so that that actually, it's funny that you say that. That's actually been mm. asked now. Uh, every time we do one of these interviews, oh really? Uh, oh. There, is, there are no plans to, for whatever reason, add another faction. That's uh, fair enough. It's, it's. Um, I think it'd be it'd be a lot easier for new new players to understand if they were just completely different factions as opposed to split split rooms. Don't know that. Uh, Don't know. It, there's a whole. I think I think I broke it down last time. Yeah, like, we broke it down a couple three. of times before for sure. I haven't, been, I haven't been in the last couple of streams, so I probably missed it. Yeah, let's let's move on to we have covered that a couple of times before. <laughs> um, we've got a lot of questions, so that's worth all right. Let's let's have them. Um, okay, from a Gurgis, who I don't think is very happy. Um, why are you afraid to nerf things properly? Um, from what he's seen, you guys are scared to do real nerfs and prefer to chip away at things with small nerfs, which That's apparently funny. causes justified rage. All right. <laughs> no. So, uh, um, I would I would start off with saying that was a selectively... First of all, thank you for asking the question, because I think clearly <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard question. 
but uh, I would I would actually call that selectively short memory. Uh, <laughs> we nerfed everything in the game. Yeah, for by sure. Lot. Just now, yeah. twice in a row, uh, and we're kind of still recovering in general from that. I th Huge. okay. Actually, you know what's great? You know, I was talking about translating from what someone says to what they what they mean. Uh, so, I'm going to make a couple guesses. I'm going to guess, um, given by the people's reactions, he's not talking about my personal fears. Uh, what he's talking about is. Uh, KF trees, and why we did what we did instead of um, uh, totally doing something different. Uh, well, I'm gonna guess that's what it is. And again, this is what I'm saying: you translate from what someone says into what they what they actually mean. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think a couple things a couple things are going on with 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 trees in general. One is statistically the power of trees uh, isn't there as far as people winning games. Um, Apart from it's Tiny. Just, <laughs> it's, just, it's just not. There are some people who play KF uh, that, are, that are adding tree stuff into their deck. Um, mm. Now, this is also a partial truth, right? Um, just because it's not topping the charts uh, doesn't mean that there's not a problem, right? No. Um, so, what we did is we when I described the council process to you just recently, we had the PCRs where we tried to address the, the biggest things in the faction. Actually what I wound up doing with that was uh, Zyron had made some really interesting nerfs. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I didn't, I didn't agree. I really didn't agree with the nerfs. I told you personally my opinion on trees and where they should have... Well, well uh, let, let, let me get the whole answer out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, that was kind of the first half. Uh, yeah. The KF forums were actually had a whole lot of really great stuff. I haven't heard from Gore Bucket since, but he had a fantastic post uh, that a lot of it was based around uh, changing how the summoned trees worked. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and again, as a reminder, I'm now talking about trees because I think that's what he's talking about. Um, <laughs> I think he um, is, yeah. Again. Think he is. So, um, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, so the reason I didn't just say uh, all trees get half hit points and zero defense and if you deploy when you lose uh, uh, is because statistically... They're kind of in this. They're definitely in this in this no man's land of they're good. Um, they won't win you every game, but there's definitely a lot of good going on. Um, a lot of it has to do with um, tactics, um, which is why I think people don't. Which is why I think there's a bad perception <laughs> against them. That is to say, if someone's a great tactician, not a strategist, but a tactician, and they're playing you, uh, um. Uh, and they're very good with trees. It can, it can. Galvan. It can uh, squish you. Um, <laughs> um, but there's it. It, it, it uh, that kind of discounts what it takes to get them out. Um, I think there's just a couple that, of offenders in trees. Like I don't think. Yeah, right. I think so, it's more so that, that um, like you said, with the summons. And uh, sorry, go on. <laughs> Well, so, uh, um, and also, actually, in the, in the thing that we did last night, Moles, when we were playing a game, uh, I forget who it was, said, wait, you have to create a ticket for everything that you do? Uh, it's like, yeah, because if I don't, it doesn't get in the patch notes. And I think it was actually a post this morning, like, ninja nerf to this spell! And it's like, oh, I got to put it in the patch notes. Uh, there were a few things that happened with KF, specifically with, um, there's actually a lot of Gore Bucket suggestions where it was taking some of the runes that were summoning units making them summon uh, saplings with no upgrades, which is using the same paradigm that we've set down for summoning units. Um, uh, in fact, the new summoned sapling units were so significantly different uh, and weaker than the uh, not just the old summon units, but summoned, uh, uh, but the uh, uh, saplings. We actually gave them a, a different idol. Yes. Uh, 
so you could recognize what was going on. Um, uh, you know, uh, so a lot of things, a lot of things happen. There is no point. Am I going? You know, I'm too scared to change this because the players might get mad at me. It doesn't matter what I do; players are gonna get mad at me. I've accepted that. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, dude, I'm sick of all the negative feedback. Like, can't we have um, constructive you know, feedback? Like Jesus. Well, see, see, <laughs> part of it is also um, I don't want to blame everything on SOE, but <laughs> I you, do. I, you guys have <laughs> noticed. Uh, you don't have to yell to get my attention. No. Uh, you know, you post on the forums. If I don't see that. Uh, Senshu gives me a ton of information. Uh, talk to the council guys. Uh, you know they'll put things up there. I try to create a lot of avenues to let us know about stuff. Um, yeah, but I think people are still used to people are still used to not being heard unless they yell. Uh, so I think that's a lot of where that's coming from, and I take yeah, it with a grain of salt. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. So, SOE, SOE just didn't listen. Like as simple as that. Right, and that's that is not how this game, both in general and Pox Nora, uh, should be played. So, uh, to Tree specifically, uh, we have a new council member, uh, member Carnivore, who's going to be. He's already like telling me of the dissertation he's going to be writing on, on some of this stuff. <laughs> I think, I think, and I'm obviously going to listen. I'm listening to you guys and. I'm sure I haven't been reading the, the stream, but I'm sure a lot of people are gonna are gonna uh, be making comments. We're not done with them, but uh, I don't want. I'm not going to make changes in the game purely for perception, but I will make changes in the game that. Uh, um, uh, that's a terrible answer. <laughs> that makes sense. That's 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 belittling. That's not what I mean to say. Um, you know, uh, uh, if a lot of players want to see something change, that's cool, and I'm going to work my butt off to find out why yeah. they want to see that change. That's cool. And address what that core reason is. That's yeah. probably a better way to say it. So it's not a matter of being scared, it's a matter of really understanding what the problem is. And sometimes it takes more than one patch. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, you, you're another thing I think you said previously was that if, if you literally just went in with a massive hammer and crushed something um, killing the theme you know I think you said previously you know if you do tackle it in small stages you will hopefully get to the problem is that the route right. you're trying to go down now right sometimes you open stuff up and it's just like there's nothing here here um, and yeah. sometimes you open it up and you just see worms everywhere like the sacrifice thing we just did that, that was cool. cool. Easy. Yeah, it was cool. It was consistency. I like I like changes that make the game more consistent. I'm a huge fan of it from an execution standpoint, from a gameplay standpoint, yeah. from a design standpoint. Uh, it makes it makes the world better. And basically, Neat. everything that was doing sacrifice was doing sacrifice in its own way. <laughs> and now it's a mechanic. And I'm yeah. sure we're gonna find a couple of things that still are outliers, but mm. now they can be addressed and fixed with this is the mechanic that we use. Yeah, right, I think some... that's definitely a good way to go. Having standardized mechanics is going to make the whole thing a lot simpler right. yeah. on Pox, you know. The thing is with Pox, like, there's so many different inconsistencies that you remember them all individually, like how they work, so you can play around them. Wow. Um, so when they do get changed, it's going to be it's going to be very strange, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's, there's the growing pains to that too. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm willing to put put myself and you guys through that pain, um, <laughs> you know, when when needed, because I think it makes the game better in the long run. Sure. So, uh, one last point to make on trees. I got to say, I really liked the whole young sapling thing, and I really liked the the new um, the new sprite for them, slightly yeah. different color, which I thought was really cool. Is that on the forum? Or is that? Uh, if you've not seen the young saplings yet, they, no. they, I think yeah. they, they start with um, six speed, including bonus, have less damage, less abilities. They can't take root. Uh, it's just a balanced summon, really. Like it's it's more of a sort of, sort of right. standard sort of little tree. And actually, the, uh, like I said, a lot of that was actually from Gore Bucket, which I which I really liked, and I worked his his name into the flavor text with the saplings. I don't know if he's noticed that, but uh, it's like 
I forget. Players can look it up. Thing is with the saplings, I don't think it's um, necessarily a massive problem. I think it's just the amount of of, of summon champs that they, they've got. Like they've got the Kefern, the uh, the tree callers, the wood elves, and then obviously the tree callers are bugged. And I think and also their boost is on like the Patriarch, which has also has shroud, and it's very cheap. You know? I think it's just the amount of them that you've actually got to go through. It's not necessarily. You know the champ itself. I mean, obviously it's powerful, but yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll we'll we'll. Uh, um, I think this is a beautiful example of what I'm talking about. So when I did my analysis and talking with the players and everyone, it seemed like the issue was the strength of the individual summons. And of course, I'm gonna get nerdy for a second, okay? Um, so um, once you make once you address one thing incrementally, you get what's called a problem domain change so um, the biggest problem might have been the strength of the summons now that those have been mitigated the next piece of it would be the amount of summons or the rate of summons or the counters to summons so now that can be looked at and addressed and what you wind up getting is a little bit of like a like a smooth back and forth that'll wind up getting in and getting in there so it, it sometimes it takes a little bit of poking and prodding to do it but um, that's what we're doing and I fully and I fully expect to be yelled at and have my sexuality brought into question on the forums. <laughs> so, um, one other thing I think that perhaps uh, I'm not sure if you're aware. <clears throat> sorry, if you're aware of or or whatever. But is it the um, which one is it? Is it the tree cooler? I think that changes forms and it reset the cooldown of summon tree spirit. Uh, yeah, that's the um, uh, Woodland Marshal. It's one of the two, yeah, one of those two. Right. No, that's, uh, the that's actually the Elven Tree Caller. Oh, the tree I actually, yeah. yeah, I brought it up with Geddon, and uh, oh, you mind if I uh, say your response? Sure. Uh, basically, Geddon said that it's very uh, the shifting be, uh, to reset the uh, timer on the cooldown for uh, summon sapling isn't that it's kind of an exploit but it's not anything major because it only reduces the amount that you can put out uh, in terms of turns by one turn because, because you're going to shift every five turns so to be, to be clear it's not that it's not an issue mm. it's that uh um, it's not the main issue, and I wanna I wanna get to it. But um, yeah. under the hood, the problem is when you have a shift. There's not. We have our own language that we write abilities in now uh, on the server. Uh, it's been that way, you know, for for a while. Uh, and there's an issue with that language when you're adding, removing things, and preserving cooldowns. Uh, so it would be a lot of work to fix that one deal. Whereas I'd rather put that effort into fixing some uh, of the other bigger stuff first. That yeah. said, I think we still have a ticket for that, so when we get to it, we get to it. Hmm. Well, it sounds like Sentry's got it on his list anyway, so... Cool. Okay, uh, so yeah, we've discussed trees in quite some length, so let's move on. Um, we've got a, good f a few really good questions from Hayashi, actually. Um, he wanted to know first of all how would you describe the strengths and weaknesses of each faction and what do you plan to do to make each faction feel unique I think he's talking uh, sort of more sort of, bleh, sort of more mid to long term alright so um, I'm sorry uh, since you texted me stuff I can't read and talk at the same time I had this weird sorry. brain thing no no it's cool I just can't like um, I don't multitask. <laughs> uh, I know that sounds terrible. Um, so each each faction. This is a quest, a question in uh, sixteen parts um, <laughs> because it's both what I think about the faction and you know what you do to make them unique. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to try to answer them as quickly as 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 possible. Um, so uh, UD is supposed to be a melee beater. Uh, what is being done to make them more melee beater? Focusing them on melee beater. Um, 
So there's actually been a lot of a lot of uh, from the revamp. There was a lot of complaints. Like, hey, why don't we have a you know, a whole schload of seven, eight range guys? Because um, you're UD. Uh, UD is supposed to be a uh, melee beater. If you want to melee beat against UD, you're you're gonna lose. Uh, the style when you play a UD characters when you put him down, you know he's gonna die. You just want him to kill everything he can before he dies. That's UD. If that's how you want to play it, that's generally not every theme, but that's generally uh, what you want to roll with. Um, so, and ha how how we're continuing that? It's basically just staying true to that original idea. Uh, one thing that was great that Sokolov said was it's difficult to stick with these um, major themes when you have minor breaks. Because if you have minor breaks, every now and then we add a good range unit in UD, let's say. Mm. Uh, it's not too long before you can make a very solid mid-range UD battle group. That's right. Um, you know, it adds up over time. So there are some that are kind of mid to low range, but uh, the best way to make sure UD stays feeling like UD is not having... A uh, whole bunch of Grimlick style characters or um, KF style characters. On the flip um, side of that, though, um, I mean, you can't release melee beaters forever. I mean, it's, you're surely going to run out of ideas eventually. Uh, I haven't run out of ideas yet. I'll let you know when I do. <laughs> um, Fair enough. There's good all answer. these different ways. So I'll tell you something. There's always different ways to pull that to pull that off. Mm. Uh, you know. Uh, for example, I think one of the things we're, we're talking about is uh, summons being an issue. The Raven Speaker had a really cool way of doing, of dealing with summons. There mm. might be some more ways to do things to deal mm. with uh, yeah. summons that could be coming through melee beaters. I'm not saying make an entire faction around them, but that's a neat idea. Yeah. I also like the idea of, and I haven't thought this through yet, but the Volsair, uh, which there are not a whole lot of them in, in UD, um, mm. I like the idea of just those big ass dudes with their sword yeah. just being able to cut down a no can yeah, do no. Uh, unit. Like, I, I, just, I just want to be able to cut them in half. So, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a nice way to, to make that. Like, maybe if they, uh, if they miss, they automatically re attack until they don't miss, and they get one damage for every time they miss. That'd be mm. a real, real fun way to. So, anyway. There's a, there's a million ways to do to do different things. It does require uh, some thought, but uh, yeah. you know, it's going to be another another at least another eight years before I start running out of ideas. Ideas well, have never been. I've I've seen um, a couple of threads about similar champs already. Um, for example, Mebron made a, a thread about Voil and how a few of them are really similar, and you just out of the three, you pick the best. And, uh, well, right. So yeah. a, a lot of that was a result of, uh, again, the the um, post Moljara. Instead mm. of adding new mechanics, they just made them stronger. So yeah. when all the units were normalized, mm. there you lost differences between some of the characters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is neat because the, I see that as an opportunity. Right now, you're going to get some guys that are shoeboxed. But moving forward, I'm a huge fan of revamping old stuff. Hell yeah, so, so am I. Let's say with the next faction, I come out with a clown sub theme for Voil. <laughs> I'm not really doing a clown sub theme. <laughs> let's say I do, right? I could go back and look at some of the units that are bland or being mixed with other things and change them up without without costing anything else and bring them into that theme. So yeah. when a new theme comes along, you already have a bunch of guys that you can play in that theme. It's kind um, of like next so, month in it, you know. <laughs> right. It, it it gives it gives me a little bit of, of, of freedom there. So it's not yeah. necessarily a bad thing that that happens and I do recognize that that did. So Yeah. Cool. A lot of people uh commenting on the idea of more more buff size. They think they're badass and they want more. They are. <laughs> I love them. Yeah, I, love I think the people. first one was drawn by Jakub, and that guy is just a badass. Yeah, they're so cool looking. 
So yeah, more Voffs up, please. Uh, also, right Gillow said um, that Melee Beta is not a theme. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> UD begs to differ, bitch. Right. <laughs> so we're talking about... Okay, you know what? He's technically correct, which is the best kind of correct. Um, so what we're talking about is like, is like the overall faction deal. And as a note, I covered one of eight, so I have seven to go. I don't think we're going to get through all seven and still have... <laughs> I yeah, I think we'll so. probably run out of time before we get to the end, won't we? Right. So I'll just, I'll any, just any I'll faction just... you want to particularly emphasize on them. Uh, well, I'll do the hardest one to talk about. I'll talk about the two that, that are the hardest. Right. We know what KF is. We know what ST is. Uh, the one that would be hard to talk about would be FS, uh, Forlar Swamp, and uh, SP. Um, Forlar Swamp is a little hard to talk about because they're they're they kind of became a jack of all trades um, uh, so it's difficult to go back in and enforce a lot of those those themes now their original base concept was they were the mobility faction not the speed faction the mobility faction and the knowledge uh, they could leap they could move they had they had originally the great uh, Nora generation as well. Hell yeah! Um, yeah. Now again, the whole thing with um, what um, uh, Sock said, um, which is when you have a little bit of something in a faction, uh, when you're running in a deck, it could be that's everything, right? So not everyone has all the same Nora generation options as. Uh, um, uh, 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 FS, but uh, they don't need them. You don't need many options. You need one when you're running your, your battle group, right? So um, they're they're a little harder to to talk about. Um, they're kind of finding their niche within that mobility thing, but also within the themes inside them. Um, SP is also a big uh, victim of that. The original SP concept was. Um, like uh, master and slave, right? You have your yeah. Mahern, you have your Moga, and it yeah. was uh, the little guys were subservient to the big guys. Uh, that was that was supposed to be the concept. What happened was they became more bestial, um, and they start they got the Voil. They started to get other uh, separate themes inside them, um, so they no longer became the the minor Zerg cooperation focused um, faction. They became much more shattered because uh, they had yeah. a bunch of different names. So I wanted to cover those two uh, because they are the hardest ones to talk about uh, You know, as far as that answer is concerned. So I think the best way to move forward with those two factions in particular is to address the themes inside those factions and make sure that the different themes are always as viable as possible. Um, I love seeing Gahern in Moga. I haven't seen Gahern in Moga in a while. Now that I think about it, um, Gahern. I, 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 I've always pronounced them Gerns. Like Gern, so it's actually Gahern. Gahern. Right. Gehern. I thought you were saying Geden. Like, no, I, British people. Gern. Yeah. I thought they were called Gerns. <laughs> no. Well, no, they do have like a little apostrophe in there, don't mm. they? So, yeah. yeah. Fair, when I first started Pox, uh, one of the earliest games I remember was against Moga when Shard Peaks just mm. came out, and I remember getting ripped by Gehrns with like forty damage. <laughs> there was there, there was the Moga dens, and they were spitting mo little pup Moga pups out, and there was hundreds of yeah. them. Oh, Nebron that's, that's says the reason you haven't seen Gehrns is because you made them unplayable. Oh, I did. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll go in there and unmake them unplayable. I just got to find that checkbox. Um, now, there, there's a lot of things that need to happen with SP, um, but I'm sure there's more questions, so I'll, I'll, I'll stop. Uh, yeah, um, I might have to start skipping a couple of these. If, uh, <laughs> on I'll, similar I'll, I'll subjects and stuff. We might have already covered stuff, you know. Um, so, another question from Hayashi, and since you might want to contribute on this one a bit. Um, he's put, I've heard that DOG has a community manager somewhere. <laughs> As part of the community, I don't feel very well managed lately. 
Uh, are Fodum at forum moderation and more frequent feedbacks from the developers something that could be realised in the foreseeable future? Uh, the Q&As on Twitch are great, but I fear lack of DOG attention towards the community in between those. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry you feel that way. Uh... I disagree. I think they um, communicate a lot more than um, mm. a lot of other well, games. Right. So again, again, the the whole back what they're saying to what what what, what I what I feel like they they they, they mean. Uh, the truth is, we do communicate a lot. Uh, yeah. We're a company of five people, and Senshu's our community guy slash tester. Most game companies that have five people don't have a community person. Um, in fact, most game companies don't have a community person. Mm. Uh, but that's kind of addressing the the content and not the sentiment. Um, he wants to see us do more stuff. That 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 doesn't that doesn't ring hollow with me. Uh, so um, to be know. fair, you know, you've just taken the game over. I'd like to see you making changes, improvements to the game, as opposed to chatting with people on the forums. Um, yeah, there's yeah. there's a visibility thing. That that's literally what's been happening. Most yeah. of the communication I've been doing in the last few weeks uh, has kind of been in the council forums, which isn't nearly as visible. But it's mostly because I'm like, okay, what? Okay, what? Yeah. All right, huh? And I'm barely even getting to play. That being said, I recognize it. Uh, we are going to be. Uh, um, we're actually hiring programmers, by the way. So if you have some Java skills and you would like a job at Desert Owl, um, uh, you know, because we just we need we need some more some more resources and some more time oh, yeah. to address everything that we want. So we're we're trying uh, is is all I can say. We'll we'll try more. Yes, I can point to the fact that most of the games don't even communicate half as much as we do, um, but. Uh, that doesn't mean it's 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 good or perfect. So, mm. I think, uh, um, well, I think since she well, does a lot of things that people perhaps don't see, um, <laughs> he does a lot. What, like, well, uh, you see? want me to take over with this? Yeah, yeah. Go on, <laughs> yeah. Let's answer. Okay, so, for yourself. <laughs> well, a lot of the stuff I end up doing is behind the scenes uh, because, like. A lot of the social media posts and stuff that takes a lot of time to hit mm. all the social media sites. Mm. That takes from one hour to two hours alone. So if I'm doing multiple posts in a day, that's several hours that just disappear. Uh, yeah. But also, I spend a lot of time uh, addressing uh, personal conversations uh, that players bring to me and stuff. I try to get around the forums, hit the uh, uh, bug threads, uh, address the uh, customer or er, the tech support forums and stuff, and uh, so it's just like I'm jumping around to a lot of things. So if you don't see me, that's generally because I'm looking at something else at the time. But uh, for uh, commenting on the uh, like the whole managing of the community, uh, a lot of the stuff that I address is as a result of people reporting stuff on the forums and using the report feature because it's kind of impractical for someone to be doing all the social media management, testing, uh, going on to a game, interacting with players, gathering information about the game, and read everything that is posted on the forums and get all the context right because I know a lot of you had problems uh, back in the SOE days where posts would just be uh, deleted or people would be banned and it, like the post was a joke so there's a fine line between a lot of that stuff and in general we tend to give the benefit of the doubt rather than bring down the hammer on everything Yeah, I, mean, I certainly know that when I when I've ever uh, gone to Sensu with a question, he's always got back to me. Yeah. Um, 
Which is good because I know certainly under SOE there was no one I could just message and get an answer out of. Um, also, Sensu does does actually like do a lot of work with supporting the tournaments and stuff, making social media posts to, to yeah. help with sign ups, profile awards, and prizes even that he's helped out with. Like that's all you know, really good stuff. Yeah, the Diet Coke. <laughs> 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 Oh, well, also, have any idea though. how much of this poison Cordyceps and I drink? It's not <laughs> even much. It's Dude. not even. My dentist yelled at me. He put his hand on my chest, <laughs> put his finger, and he's like, "Why are you drinking so much of that? You're gonna ruin your teeth." I'm like, I need love somewhere. So it was. It was a whole thing. So. Dude, I, I hope Coke's paying you for this advertisement. Jesus, yeah, it's it, it, other, other brands this. are available. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish. There's an idea. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. I, I don't think they want to see my 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 fat ass running through a field. Hey everyone, come on! <laughs> no, that's not. I don't want to see that. Okay. It that, would be more uh, I, think, I think we covered the for the the sensu thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, he does do a lot, um, and he does a lot of things that a normal community manager wouldn't have to do generally. So, mm -hmm. right. he's also her only internal tester. Mm. We all test, and he he he's kind of the. It's one of the thirty-five hats he wears. So, <laughs> yeah, I actually made uh, Sensu a, an optimized tree deck because the one he was using didn't look very good. <laughs> so I made right him a on. decent deck. I like the one I made. It's just that yours works a little bit better. <laughs> cool. All right, what's next? Okay. Um, Hayashi also wants to know, is there going to be a big spelling equipment revamp, um, or are you going to slowly adjust things in several patches? Right now, I'm very much of the mind uh, that I'm going to do things piecemeal. Uh, so I was of the mind, in, in his defense with the question, uh, I was of the mindset that I wanted to just kind of hit spells the same way, hit champions. Um, but I felt like I pulled the rug out of people way too fast, over and over. Uh, so I like the idea of addressing spells on a more case-by-case um, -case basis. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, you can you can use an algorithm for champions but you just can't do the same thing with spells relics and equips they're all also true completely different yep right uh so let's move on again uh rune availability is a big issue for the hayashi as well um and i know we covered previously i think you said um you were the last remaining person that was uh not wanting to make legendaries forgeable but sokolov may convince you um, well, basically, he wants to know about legendaries availability. Um, many runes don't exist on the trader; they're very hard to get. Um, right. You know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, will they ever become available via booster packs, like guaranteed legendaries, or 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 would they become in the forge or anything along those lines? Uh, we're we're talking about doing something here. Like I said, I was kind of the last the last holdout. Uh, I actually got an email from Sock uh, today talking about some stuff that I might want to do with uh, um, uh, that. I'm not ready to announce anything yet just because this is such a hot issue that if I'm like, all you do is trade one clown and you can get a legendary, that's what I'm thinking of. All of a sudden, everyone will be like, oh my god, save the clowns. Like, I don't know what's going to happen yet, so I don't want to say anything yet, but uh, um, I'm putting a lot of thought into that area right now. So in other words, save the clowns. <laughs> Bring in the clowns.